Now our next guest has a knack for learning languages, studying over 50 and speaking over a dozen fluently. Now his latest challenge is mastering a cupola fuckel and Richard Simcott joins us now to tell us how is it all going. Well, good, good morning. morning. Diagwitch to you, Richard. How are you? Thank you very much for having me. I'm very impressed because you've only just started with Irish, haven't you? Yeah, it's very, very early days with Irish. So uh, it will be uh, my new project for this academic year. Oh, very good. And do you find it more difficult than other languages or is it similar? So far, so good. Uh, I've got a background in Celtic languages because I'm Welsh and English, so I also speak Welsh. Oh, so it'd be quite similar then, would it? Well, we have we have the the mutations in Welsh as well, so that should help with the sort of the background. And I've been learning Cornish too, so I've got a couple of other Celtic languages. Cornish have its own language. Yeah. Really? <laughs> oh wow! There you go. You learn something new every so. day. I Listen, it was just a pasty. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, I mean, I can barely speak English. So where did you, where did you get this knack? to be able to learn all these languages? And, and how early did you know that you could do this? Well, I've always loved um, playing with accents and dialects and things. So I've, I've, as a child, I used to uh, imitate different accents and I, I loved doing it, speaking in different ways and then adding different words in. So my original accent is Scouse and in English. And, and so it's quite different from the standard. And then when you move from that to other accents around, I was sort of just playing with them all the time as a child. Hold on and a second, then, you're a scouser? Yeah. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. But, but I'm not talking like that now, you know, like scouser is very different, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um... <laughs> and why? Why, Richard, did you go for a more neutral accent or is it just your, your household that you grew up in Liverpool? Well, no, I mean, I, so, I mean, I grew up speaking with a Scouse accent originally as a, as a young child, but the friend circles that I had were always different. So my accent sort of, my neutral accent changed over time. So I don't make a huge effort to speak this way. It's not like an unnatural way of speaking, but um, mm. definitely the original way I spoke was Scouse. And it's a good starter, I suppose, for all the different languages that you now speak over 50. Um, how do you approach a language when you're learning it? So every language is different because there are different materials available. There are some things that are absolutely standard. And the first thing is to get over the psychological barriers we have as adults. So not being worried about making mistakes, knowing that you're going to forget way more than you know. Uh, those things we tend to sort of beat ourselves up about as adults. And we allow children and we think children can learn very quickly. Of course they can. The thing is, is that children don't have those psychological barriers we have. So getting over those is the first thing. Mm. Second thing is making sure that I'm heading somewhere. So I want to set myself some goals that are achievable, um, learning things that are valid and necessary for my own life. So not worrying about words in the beginning that I'm never going to use because they're not appropriate to me or to my friends and family circles. And then doing something every day. Language isn't something that goes into your head by osmosis. You have to actively do something. So these are the kinds of guiding principles I have for learning any language. And tell us, Richard, what was the easiest language to learn? So for sure, Esperanto, because it was designed that way. It's a designed language that um, was meant to be an international lingua franca. And so now tell us what standard. Esperanto is. So it's a language that was developed um, in the late 1800s um, by a man called Ludwig Zamenhof. And he made it as a neutral language for people to speak that has no political or country affiliation. So basically everyone's on the same level playing field. And it was made to be simple for anyone to learn. OK. And talk to us about learning Estonian. In a month you got us down, Pat, so you could appear on Estonian TV. Yeah, that was a bit crazy. So um, I was playing with a, an application on my iPhone called Speakly. And I decided that instead of just doing a review of this application on my YouTube channel or on my social media platforms, I would actually just test it out for a month full time as like a job. So I did it um, for an entire month from zero to hero, hopefully. And uh, 
did about three, four hours a day of study, learning 40 words a day. So after a month, I'd covered 1,240 words in the month of July. And then Estonian TV approached me and said, would you like to do an interview? So I was like, okay. They called me and I didn't expect that they would arrange it all in Estonian, but they did. So I, I went on TV in Estonia and um, yeah, just answered basic questions, but it was, it was a lot of fun. So, Richard, if we were to ask, invite you back on the show in a month's time, would you be fluent in Irish? I don't know how fluent I'd be. It depends on my work schedule. So July was a very uh, easy month for me to take off and just focus on Estonian. But if we say, come back to me by, you know, in a couple of months after my workload, I won't be able to do <laughs> Irish at the same intensity. Yeah. I may well be able to do something. Well, don't worry, Richard. I don't think myself or Alan could interview you in, in Irish. Irish so. No, we couldn't anyway. <laughs> so what, what is your favourite language then? Uh, my favourite language is probably German. German? And yeah. It's not, it's not it's the not... sexiest of languages. I thought you would say French or like, you know, some beautiful lilting words. But German, it's hardly the sexiest of languages. I know it's I mean in terms of sounds and things I possibly have other languages that I prefer the sound of but I love German because I was an au pair in Germany after university okay. and I worked with three young girls and I think memories of he hearing children speaking their language and playing and doing different things with the kids it was just such happy memories for me that um, it will always stay with me as something very special. And I'm not doubting you for a moment, but how do you know you're fluent in a language? Do you have to actually go to the place and speak it for a week to know that you've got it? Now, that is the, the, the big question. People often talk about fluency and what fluent, fluent means. Um, it's very difficult to say because you can be fluent in certain subjects. And then to actually be fluent in a language it's quite subjective. I certainly say that if you feel that you can go from subject to subject and you don't have to worry about going back to another language or you sort of feel quite confident in talking and learning through that language, then you're pretty much fluent. OK. Well, you're going to give us some Irish words then and see if myself and Claire, you would know, you'll know them. The cupola fuckle. Yeah, you know the cupola fuckle. I'm, I'm very bad, I have to admit. Hands up, I'm terrible. But um, give us some Google Irish Donna. words. <laughs> OK. So it's very basic at the moment. But yeah. um, it's Richard. Uh, as Chester May. What's that? Uh, Tommy Mahoney e Skopje Anish. What's Tom? What's from Chester. That? But he's living in. Where are you living? Skopje. Skopje at the moment. Where's Skopje? It's in North Macedonia. You're in North Macedonia at the moment. So that's what you've said to us. So did you understand that, Claire? Sha. Sha. Tashe gachinach er fad gurf mila maha got Richard. I love it. Thank you. And I will I say thank you for joining us. We'll give you a couple of months and then you come back on. We want the whole interview in Irish. I will look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks very much. North Macedonia, there you go. He gets around, doesn't he? Doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Fair play to him. Wow.